Not everything is a taco, George. That's not true. This week on the Fish Guys. There you go. Nice fish, Bubba. That's a big one. Nice. Fish. Little fatty. Look at he's not very long, but he's fat. Mr. Jack Crevel. My favorite fish to catch. I don't know. What is it? I don't know. It's, it's a Parabutto Unicorn Asinctus. That, my friend, is going to be a fish. Fish on! Got a fish on! Getting ready for a fishing trip, it takes time. It takes the proper preparation. It's all about icing the boat down, getting the rods together. Most of the time, it takes two guys, but sometimes it's only one of us here doing the work. It's always late. So this morning, well, I'm running a bit late. Coming. You're 30 minutes late. Man. I stopped and got you something. This morning for George, he just rolls right up. I'm already ready to go. Hey, seriously, let's go. Seriously. We gotta go catch bait. Wait a minute. I'm late this morning. But so are you sometimes, and I brought us something to eat. Check this out. If you're not on this boat See before that? I thread this line through these last two eyes, check this out. You'll be standing at the dock eating those all day. Oh, mm. it's so good. Let's go. Life is not a box of cheese and guava pastries, George. Lane, it's so good when it touches your lips. Watch this. Watch this. Look at how it crumbles. Um, let's go. Seriously. Let's go. You're grumpy. I'm, I'm not grumpy. I'm ready to go catch bait. I got Cuban sandwiches, too. Hey, do you have any um, wet wipes or do you have a napkin? It's like driving this day. Today, the fish guys are fishing a coveted location, the Florida Everglades. Being that we're going fishing in the Everglades, we're starting out by catching bait. I don't know if they were actually eating the chum or just came by the boat. No, they were eating it. Were they? Yeah. They piled That's into That's a good that. sign. Getting bait with Lane is always entertaining. I've got the cast net in my hands, ready to throw, and he's got about 20 remote controls hanging around his neck. He looks like a technical nerd. You know what we need? We need more remote controls that you can hang off your body. Do they make You're a, a walking <laughs> sideshow. <laughs> God forbid you ever fell down. Everything would start <laughs> turning on on the boat. Going in circles. Uh, just throw the net. I'm getting out of your way. George might have brought pastries to the dock, but in my book, he was still late. So I'm going to be operating the troller motor with the remote control. I'm going to make him throw the cast net. I like that net, though. You really throw it well. Thank you. Can you get more bait with it? Whoa. Hey, that was a pancake. That was. That was a pancake. With syrup. Good throw. With syrup. Good throw. Thanks. Way to way to good boost job. my way to boost my self-esteem. Good job. You're so good at throwing that net, George. I think you should throw it every day. You're much better than me at it. That's what you get for showing up late, huh? Cast net duties today. How many did you get? Oh, I crushed them. Oh man, we're almost there. Now it's baiting the live well. I got the cast net back in the bucket, and it's time for some trout action. It's all feeling a little trouty, my man. I can feel that head shaking. Fishing for these sea trout in the shallows is always fun. I love it. Oh, yeah. Fishing popping corks, making yeah. noise, throwing jigs out there. You know, the little soft plastic baits underneath the cork, the cork goes down and it's fish on. I just love it. There you go. My man. A spotted sea trout. Nice. We're catching the trout in this bottleneck. They're moving in and out to spawn. This isn't a huge trout, but it is a female. But we're going to let this girl go. And we know it's a female because the male's drum or croak. 
So we're gonna let her go either down here in the water. I had a big one on. Oh, when you were getting the net for me? No. A couple weeks ago. Oh, a couple weeks ago. The fish guys are being brought to you by Wellcraft, built by fishermen for fishermen and their families. Tough coat. Tough Coat Marine for the world's number one non-skid coating for boats, decks, and docks. Jefferson's Bourbon. Transform corn to get bourbon. Transform bourbon. Get Jefferson's. Tackle Webs. Instant gear storage. Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Just a few miles from Key Largo is the Florida Everglades National Park. George and Lane have taken the short boat ride to fish the flats for trout. George and I do a lot of work in the Everglades guiding people, but it's rare that the two of us get to go out and have fun in our own backyard. We're going to have a good day today catching these trout in the shallows of Everglades National Park. Oh, fish on! Fish on! You're fishing with your buddy, it becomes a team sport. Man, he hit that hard. That's a nice trout, too. Oh, he pounded it. Nice trout. What? Let me get the net. And when you have a nice fish on the line and your buddy fails oh, to get the net for you. Oh, it came off. It just sucks to lose fish like that. Come off? Yeah, you took too long. How did it take too long? It's way you were getting there. the net out, it took you too long. It's not my fault. Yeah, it is. If I didn't have to wait so long, we could have caught it. Wait so long for what? It took you like at least a minute and a half to get a net out. It just ruined it. The fish wasn't even to the boat. It w would have been. If what? If you would have had a net out. George, you're blaming it on a net. Dang it! That doesn't make any sense. The problem was the guy holding a fishing rod in his hand. That Bass was a fishing. slob. I didn't do they anything have, did wrong. Did you set the hook on him? You had to do something wrong because you lost the fish. I did not set the hook. You didn't do everything right. All right, so I'm a little angry. I could have landed that fish with just a little help from Lane. So instead, I'm on the back of the boat minding my own business, doing my own thing. Where's your core? You free lining the bait? Being sneaky back there, free lining the bait? What you got? Well, he's got a fish. It's like hiding back there, doing <laughs> sneaky stuff behind my I'm back. I'm doing some things that I don't want you to see. Yeah. Are they illegal? No. But I'm not giving away all my tricks. Do you need a net? No. Nah. I'll, I'll get my own net from now on. Jack Travell. What you got, pal? I got a jack. Look at you, a little knocker rig. Sneaky, sneaky back there. I'm just trying something different. Sneaky, the water's sneaky. deeper than you think. There's nothing like getting in a school of Jack Ravels. Once you get them around the boat, it's a blast. You got one? Yeah, I got something. Uh, exactly. Like jack. Jack. Fish on. Fish on, lady. Let me get the net. Lady fish. Oh. Poor man's tarpon, George. I'm telling you that's who's been stealing my bait out I think there. so. These lady fish are a blast. They run with the trout and jacks. They call them lady fish. They chew you up and spit you out. <laughs> <laughs> so you know you're in a good trout spot when you're catching lady fish. Oh, what is that? What is it? Hang on. Big trout. Big is trout. Really? Yeah, big one. Get the net. Gonna break the line. Get him up, get him up, get him up. There you go. Nice fish, Bubba. That's a big one. Nice trout. It's a good one, huh? That's a beauty. And it's hooked in the corner of the mouth. It's those big female trouts we're after back there. Hooked here. right there, so that'll That's come right, out. Yeah. Sea trout have tender mouths, so you've got to be really careful when you're working them into the boat. And also, when you're going to return them back like a spawning female like this, we want to be careful that we release her okay. Nice, what, 20 inches, 19 inches? Probably fat, though, like super fat. She's probably full of row. That's why we're letting them go, huh? Yeah. Revive her a little I mean, bit. She's, she's got some big old belly on her. Good to go. Good job. 
That was awesome, huh? Good job. That was nice. Those big trout are fun. Heck yeah. Got soft mouths, so you never know quite. Sitting when in the creek waiting for something to float in there. The Everglades is roughly one and a half million acres right in the backyard of the upper Florida Keys. All shallow water. Average depth is only four feet of water throughout the Everglades. It's an adventure both above and below the waterline. So after a short move to a new location, we put the power poles down, got some fresh baits on the hooks, hoping to catch a different species of fish. Fish on. Fish on. Fish on. I got him. Boy, he popped, popped he that thing. He sounded like a brick hit the Busted water. that thing. <laughs> he blew that thing up on the surface. It's a nice one. Decent. Not that there's such thing as a bad species. No. I'll take nice. him. Oh, nice. and he jumps. You know what I tell people? <laughs> What's a that? snook is a snook. That's right. Nice fish, buddy. Little fatty. Nice Look at you. He's not very long, but he's fat. He's not too short either. No, but 27 he's inches maybe. Fat. <laughs> Good job, bud. Good job. <laughs> You know what they say about the weather in the Florida Keys? If you don't like the way it is, just wait five minutes because it changes that often. Fish on! You got one! I got something <laughs> going moving on front. And we started out with sunny conditions, caught some fish, moved around, but now the clouds are rolling in, which makes fishing a little more difficult. Jacks always eat. They're always swimming. So they're always eating. That's no slouch, my friend. That is no slouch. Ugh. Not too shabby. Mr. Jack Cravel. Nice. One of my favorite fish to catch. Pound for pound. No harder fighting fish. Let that bad boy go. We'll catch him again another day, huh? Growing up in the Keys, I've spent a ton of time in the Everglades. Being that my good buddy Lane is from South Louisiana, I thought to myself and said, he probably needs a little bit of education learning some of these bird species. So, a few days ago, I had an opportunity to take Lane on a little field trip. See the sign up here? Oh, the Wild Bird Center? We're going to the Wild Bird Center. You know what, Lane? You remind me of a bird. <laughs> I remind you of a yeah. bird? So I took Lane to the Wild Bird Center, founded by Laura Quinn. You, you do resemble a bird. So okay. are you... You have a giant beak, you have that lip service. My name is Lane. My name is Lane. Follow me. We're going to go have some fun. you got to be kidding me. Just pick, the, just pick the stuff. Absolutely Those are recyclable. Ridiculous. Can you pick up some of the stuff? I will. So Ooh. this is a great horned owl. Well, yeah. Okay, but I, I mean, why are they giving birds titles now? Not, that's a type of bird. It's an owl. It's nah, a great I, horned I mean, owl. You're saying he's great, but I, he's probably. That's really not his cool. name. It's a species. Great horned owl. His name's oh, probably Howie okay, or okay. Joe or Phil. It might so be it's Phil. Like, all right, so like it's Phil. like mutton snapper is the yellowtail snapper. Yes, that's exactly. a species. That's a species. Of, a great horned you. owl. I thought they were just saying he's great. I take it upon myself to educate Lane to some birds that he's never ever seen before. And with his accent, he can't pronounce them at all. Look at him up there. That is pretty cool. What is it? I don't know. What is it? I don't know. It's a. It tells you right there. It's a Parabuto unicornisinctus. Parabuccio unicinctus, George. Come on. Just keep looking at the pictures. After walking down the boardwalk, we ended up getting a personal tour of this awesome facility. I'm gonna meet my buddy Rob. Watch this. Kaka! Kaka! Buddy Rob, you know somebody here? <laughs> hey, what's, what's up? up, man? What's hey, going Lane on, Goodwin. Rob? Lane Goodwin. Good nice to, meet to meet you, Rob. I had to bring Lane by here because um, he acts a lot like a bird. He chirps a lot, okay, and resembles a bird a little bit. So 
So what do, you, what do you guys do here? What is this place? Our mission is really simple, right? It's to, it's the three R's. Rescue, rehabilitate, and release wild and migratory birds. Uh, and that's what we do. We caught some fish yesterday. We caught some pilchards and we put them in the cooler so we can bring those in and, and maybe feed them to some animals. We'd love it. Look, our, love bird, it. our birds would love it. And, and most of our donations, especially food, uh, it comes strictly from donations from folks like you. Perfect. And, and the community. Awesome. Love to help out, Rob. Laura Quinn Wild Bird Sanctuary is home to over 100 non-releasable permanent bird residents as well as wild birds. Got the pilchards, got the sardinos. George and I fed the birds some of our pilchards and really had a chance to soak up this awesome bird sanctuary. Oh wow, check that out. Come on, let's go. You see that? That's a masked-footed booby over there. You have a there. bird book? I'm a birder. And binoculars? I'm a birder now. The great thing about this facility is they have an active animal hospital. Here they rehabilitate and give medical attention to these animals so they can be released back into the wild or brought to the sanctuary. We chirp quite a bit too, you know? I always need to have fun with Lane. I'll eat one if you eat one. Can I grab one? I don't know. Can you? I bet you I can make Lane eat a worm. There's a pile of them on the side. Look, Look man, roll them up on the side of the thing. Hold your hand out. <laughs> I told you he was just like a bird. A little bit of an aftertaste, not bad. Probably high in protein. I need that crap. <laughs> really? Yeah, really. Really? <laughs> the Fish Guys are being brought to you by Wellcraft, equipped for fishing, crafted for comfort. Tough Coat, Tough Coat Marine for the world's number one non-skid coating for boats, decks, and docks. Jefferson's Bourbon, transform corn to get bourbon. Transform bourbon, get Jefferson's. Cooler Webs, don't get soggy. Kaisek, the ultimate ice chest. There's few things better in this world than watching the sun go down. But one thing that is, is fishing while you're doing it. I got one. Oh, Jack. It's like the candy store in there. Yes. Hey, this is a magical time of day. People are off the water. It seems like the wind just calms down and it gets really, really active. These fish know that dark is coming and they're getting ready to fire up and start eating everything. Fish on. Fish on? Yes. Out in the middle, huh? Oh, <laughs> he's got some Jack. shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I roll. The water's getting still. Things are getting quiet, other than all the fish we got blowing up on bait fish. So for us, it's really important not to make any noises or slam things on the boat, because guess what? You'll spook the fish. Just get a bite. Why are you gonna slam stuff, huh? Why did I slam stuff? I didn't mean to. You're so loud. I did it. Yes. I'm excited. Hey, nobody's perfect. I do get excited. We're on a honey hole here, and things are about to get crazy. Oh, see, you got one. A little snook hanging up in there. Good cast. That was awesome. Snook are very similar to bass. They feed early in the morning and late in the evening. So when you can get out either first thing or at the end of the day, it's the perfect time to catch a snook feeding frenzy. Good to go. No worse for the wear. Built up his muscles, you know? Gave him a little workout. You like the workout, I hear. Your mouth. Once in a while. Your jaw. What a great way to end the day. Doubled up. I got a snapper. I think I got a big old lady fish. Catching a double header. Spent the day in the Everglades with my good buddy, Captain George Clark Jr. Just doesn't get any better than this. I'll tell you what, you eat that and I'll eat this. <laughs> no, I'm a pass. I'm a, you know what, George? I'm a conservationist. I'm gonna let this fish go. Let it grow up? Yeah, let it get bigger. Ladyfish get any That's bigger? That's pretty big. <laughs>
That's a big lady fish. Hey, we're gonna call it a day. Double header. Everglades hey, you know National what? Park. I'm hungry. Always. Let's go eat. And there she goes. Squeak! Let's do it. Time to ride out. Yet another great day with the fish guys on the water in the Florida Keys. One of George and Lane's favorite places to dock is at Sundowners in Key Largo. It's here where Chef Bobby Stokey is known for cooking up some award-winning seafood recipes. Wow, a great day of Everglades fishing today, huh guys? Yeah, Bobby. Yeah, but we didn't keep anything. It was a catch and release day. Lane never lets me keep anything. Hey, it's good to let fish go every now and then. But well, you know, you know what? what? We rely on you to prepare something awesome, so. Hey, what I got today are some great oysters, guys. Just gonna cut those right off of the muscle right there. And then I got some garlic butter, super easy, guys. Butter, garlic, salt, pepper, a little bit of wine, all right? Put a little bit of that garlic butter right on top of the oyster, just like that. He said a little bit. A little bit, all right? <laughs> and little then bit. a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Guys, you just want the cheap Parmesan cheese. Not anything expensive, cheap grated Parmesan cheese right on your grill. And then it gives you something that looks just like these babies right here. Here we go, guys. Check them out. You gonna let Lane have any? Oh. You want me to try mine first? No. I just want to eat one. Parmesan grilled oysters, all super easy. Garlic butter, a couple minutes on the grill. Just as soon as everything's melted, good to go, guys. Incredible, oh. Bobby. That's awesome. Absolutely incredible. The oysters are so tender. I mean, it's incredible. I think it's a great easy dish. <laughs> George is eating them can all. Can you not hand him the dish anymore, please? I'll try not to. Because he hoards everything. You can prepare this in no time at all. Yeah. Just watch how fast he did that. Yep. Let's do it tonight. I'm in. All right.